Good evening, my dear students. I pray and hope that you are safe and healthy wherever you are in your home in this dark situation of coronavirus pandemic. As our online class has been postponed due to various problems you were facing due to lockdown, I decided to upload my lectures on YouTube so that you can just watch it later when the situation would get better and it would be helpful or it would, it would just work as a guidance for your final exam. So let's start our lesson 10 under the course of DHSM 3101 Fire Science and Fire Dynamics and this topic is identification and control of materials considered hazardous. That means the hazardous materials which may cause fire hazard will be discussed in this lecture. So let's begin. At first, we have to identify what are the hazardous materials. Hazardous materials doesn't have any kind of definite definition because it's a, it has a varieties of impact. Any kind of natural thing or simple thing might be hazardous if it is not managed or if it is not properly used. For example, just think about the oxygen gas, which is a combustible material, but which is life-saver too. In general, we are just inhaling oxygen in our daily life. It doesn't cause any kind of harm. But if it just uh, get touched, under any kind of fuel then it will cause the combustion that might cause a devastation so any kind of chemical material that poses danger or causes harmful impact on human health or environment that can be called hazardous material and it must be managed and handled properly there are very various types of definitions, various kinds of classifications of hazardous material. You have a course on your fourth year named DHSM 4105, Hazardous Material Planning and Management. In that course, you will learn the detail about the hazardous material. Now, we'll just have a glimpse the materials which might uh, cause fire hazard and how we can manage this kind of materials. And as I told earlier, there are different kind of definition, uh, classification of hazardous material. The U.S. Department of Transportation, DOT, has leveled different hazardous material as we looked in these pictograms. And they have identified almost 1,400 types of hazardous material. So there is no limitations of hazardous material and you cannot just memorize all the names of the hazardous material you have to just understand the detrimental effect of this material and take proper precautions so that you can just take a remedy or uh, just work against the fire hazard it doesn't occur so that the fire hazard doesn't occur and for the proper shipping, marketing, and marking, and leveling, and placarding, the Department of Transportation, U.S. DOT, um, has fixed some kind of standard. I mean, which standard must be followed if you want to ship or if you kind of mark or label or placard any kind of materials that is called hazardous. That is called and why do they need that? Because this placarding or this signage will give you immediate warning of potential danger. For example, a truck or a lorry is carrying a oil loaded diesel and there is a sign of flammable oils or flammable liquid so that the general people will understand, yes, this truck is dangerous for them. Okay? and inform emergency responders of the nature of the hazard. For example, if any kind of accident occurs, if the truck got an accident and there is a spillage of diesel into the road, then normal workers or normal uh, uh, responders cannot just do this kind of situation, handle this kind of situation, because in this situation, there might be 
some fire fire explosion if any kind of uh, if they get any kind of fuel or any kind of lighter there might be explode that's why emergency responder must be aware of the situation state emergency spill or release control post procedure as i told earlier if any kind of leakage or spill happens then the special procedure must be taken so that the signage will help you what type of emergency responses or what type of precautions what type of action should be taken and minimize potential injuries from chemical exposure definitely if it is a flammable material, if it is corrosive or toxic, if you touch it with bare hand, that might be very kind of, it, it might injure you. So, this kind of flacker will help you to understand what type of hazardous material is this. As we'll move on to the other slides, we'll find out which sign actually symbols which kind of hazard. So, DOT has classified the hazardous material into nine groups. First one is explosives. This kind of sign, explosive, had different, different types of signs, but there are some basics. You will just, if you just look into this explosion sign, that is called explosive. And another one is gases. It can be flammable gas, it can be non-flammable gas, or it can be oxygen. Oxygen is different type of gas. Another one is called inhalation hazard. That means that it's not flammable, but if you inhale into your lung, then it might cause suffocation or any other health injuries. And class three is flammable liquid or, or combustible liquid. Most of all, most of all, all, you all know what are combustible liquids that is, and flammable liquids like diesel, petrol, kerosene, etc. And class 4, flammable solid, spontaneously combustible and dangerous when wet. And there are different kind of divisions under this class 4. As we discussed in the previous lectures, there's combustible solids, dust, powders, DDT, TNT. These are flammable solids. And some solids get explosion when they get touch of water. And in plus 5, we got oxidizer and organic peroxides. These are chemical products which will cause oxidization. 6. Class 6 is poisonous, any kind of chemical material that causes poison. And 7 is radioactive material that emit radioactive rays and that just make can carcinogen effects that might cause cancer for long term exposure to it. For example, alpha, beta, gamma ray, radium, thorium, cadmium, this kind of radioactive material. Class 8 is corrosives, which might just erode your skin, make irritation, and your skin might burn out. And class 9 is miscellaneous, different type of hazard. There are another classification by OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, so OSHA has classified more detail than DOT. There are 15 kind of materials. As you go through, you'll find it all common. Actually, no matter how different kind of the classification is, the things, the materials are common. So you'll find out when you just get um, a search on this. So, under OSHA, what are the hazardous materials? They are explosive, flammable gases, flammable aerosols, oxidizing gases, which has reaction with oxygen, and gases under pressure that I discussed that LPG or LNG or cryogenic liquids, then flammable liquids, flammable solids, Self-reactive chemicals. There are some kind of chemicals which just get reaction if you just put it normally in the room temperature. So these reactive chemicals will might reaction have reaction and explodes. So they are also very dangerous. 
pyrophoric chemicals self heating chemicals chemicals which in contact with water emit flammable gases uh, there are some compounds of aluminum that get heated and that get explosion if it comes with the contact of water and oxidizing liquids organic peroxide corrosives and combustible dust so you don't need to just learn the detail of this you will have to get the idea of all of this that these materials are hazardous and i if i want to work with this i have to manage it with handle with more care than the general material for example if you just want to uh, have an industry and if you just uh, work with this any kind of chemicals or in lab work just for example the laboratory work in your college life so which materials make in uh, combustion ignition you have to wear the goggles and you just work it more softly and more you have to take more precaution to work with this so here is a saying if you just want to work with this you have to be more cautious so that the fire hazard any kind of explosion any kind of corrosion or toxicology doesn't happen so there are more detail about the classifications by IMO International Maritime Organization or UNECE United Nations Economic Commission for Europe actually in your course of 4105 you have to, you'll have to read these the same thing so here you don't need to just go through or you don't need to go to the detail of all this i have just given these slides to you so that your queries your inquiries get better okay if you just want to learn about actually what are the explosives then you, you will just go through the slide and find out that dynamite tnt grenade hand grenade these are the ex explosives so and here is a different kind of classifications of explosives a b c d explosive class which may explode so easily and some explosive doesn't explode so easily so uh, according to their explosive uh, power they are categorized as class a class b or class c so gases i have already mentioned there are three type of hazardous gases flammable like acetylene hydrogen or propane which are directly flammable and there are non flammable gases like cryogenic liquids which actually gases but put under pressure as a liquid and non poisonous gases fluorine chlorine and hydrogen cyanide but if you inhale it can cause death so there are three type of classification under flammable liquids diethyl ether or carbon di disulfide gasoline petrol acetone and kerosene and diesel the these have different kind of categories because they are their boiling point according to their boiling point they are under pressure and just kept as a liquid in the cylinder like this flammable solids here they are combustible dusts and powders uh, like aluminium alkyls white phosphorus magnesium calcium potassium carbide they actually cause explosion and this explosion is very detrimental okay and what are the oxidizing agents that react with the oxygen and and that's also yields the oxygen if any kind of reaction occurs like calcium hydrochloride ammonium nitrate hydrogen peroxide and these materials these chemical agents agents have a very very affection for oxygen so either they get attached with the oxygen or they remove the oxygen ox yeah, according to the oxi oxidizing reaction and the toxic and infectious 
substances which may cause direct health impact to the health like pesticides, methylene chloride and there are some categories of these that cause fatal diseases, many cancer or any kind of infection. So you have to be very careful if you just work with this. For example, the COVID-19 virus, SARS virus, MERS virus, you were just working on the lab with this virus. So you have to be more cautious and this kind of sign will be on the lab. This is very infectious and toxic sub, sub, uh, substances that might cause health hazard, might cause fatality or death to you. And radioactive substances. You already know what are radioactive. That emits kind of radioactive rays. And you must protect yourself wearing this gas mask. As I'm showing here, we are seeing here, if you want to do with the radioactive material, any kind of accident, if, if there any kind of transport vehicle that is carrying radioactive materials and any kind of oxy, uh, accident occurs, not only the accidents, for the drivers, for the workers, the loaders or unloaders also need to wear this kind of protective clothes like PPE. And this sign will indicate the radioactivities. And corrosive substance, you already know that the dissolve the tissue acid and alkyls that is actually dissolved and maybe dissolve into your flesh. So these are very corrosive. And miscellaneous or asbestos, self inflating life valves, dry eyes, these also cause some kind of hazards. Here I have made a chart for your well understanding actually which are flammable liquids, which are flammable solids and which are flammable gases, combustible liquids and by these definitions or examples you can e easily understand so that you go through this chart. Now our main point is hazard analysis or casual investigation. If you want to avoid any kind of fire hazard occurrence, just working with hazardous material, you have to make up some procedure. You have to follow some kind of procedures that will keep you safe. Not only you, but also your workers. If you are an employee and you have lots of workers under you, so you have to just take care your health and of their health and environmental also. So in industrial work or in kind of factory work, this is very important at first identification of hazard. You have to know that this material is actually hazardous. You are working with nitrogen, you are working with ammonia in the chemical lab, but if you don't know what are the actual hazards, what is the actual danger of this ammonia or nitrogen, then there will be no use. So you have to find out the hazard and make a hazard inventory. What types and how many types or how many materials are stored or kept in your factory or in your industry. So you have you should have a detailed inventory of these materials. No not a simple material should be beyond your knowledge that I don't know that. So as a hazardous material planner or a fire emergency responder, you must have the note sheet, you must have the written document of hazard inventory. That SDS, safety data sheet, that is also important. We'll learn about safety data sheet also. In descriptive information, you will need the SDS, safety data sheet. And in the, that sheet, if we just show this, what is safety data sheet? This is called safety data sheet, which has nine sections. Um, at first, you need to give the product information. What type of product is this? Detail name, not only the general name, but also the chemical name and the popular name. And then you have to 
hazardous ingredients which hazardous ingredients that it has in itself and physical data in which state it is is it liquid or is it solid or is it gaseous and fire and explosion data for example it will explode if it comes to the temperature of this so is it will it cause explosion or will not so you have to give this kind of information on fire and explosion data then reactive data is it reactive or not is it toxic or not non toxic and preventive measures in section 7 you have to write down all the preventive measures if any kind of accident in any kind of spillage occurs then how will you save yourself or the workers from this kind of thing for example uh, some material just react with sponge so in a spillage you can not just sweep it in generally with any kind of cloth maybe you have to just sweep it with sponge so you have to take the preventive measures how to handle and how to throw how to dump these kind of chemicals or materials in a proper way and first aid measure if any kind of accident occurs for example it just put on to your eyes so it will in safety data sheet it will be written don't touch your eyes just make water splash into your eyes put in in the nose then it will say that don't inhale you have you just close your nose and give water to the nose or use this kind of medicine it will just direct you through what type of precaution measure you have to take and finally preparation information how it is prepared or contact info who has prepared this material and who has supply suppliers info so these are the classification these are the components of any safety data sheet that is identity physical and chemical characteristics physical hazard data health hazard data exposure limit carcinogenity of the material is it carcinogens or not how to take the precautions and first aid and the suppliers information if we go back to our previous slide we were here hazard analysis or casual investigation so when you get the descriptive information in your hand with SDS then you have to make a fire plan you must have a fire plan as I showed you before the fire emergency plan fire exit plan this kind of thing if any kind of exposure occurs how do you operate the fire plan and the training program you should have given the proper training to the uh, responsible persons not only the workers but also the authority or also the supervisors or mentors of the workers and you have to do the regular inspection whether all the inventories are okay whether the date are not expired if you keep any chemicals that has expired it has gone then it might be very dangerous for you so there should be a regular investigation of the materials and fire drills definitely risk evolution if any kind of fire has had occurred in that building how much risk can happen it might be the life loss and the financial risk and you have to get you have to make a detailed risk analysis of this and then accountability and responsibility and recommendation and all level of management you have to find out when you give a, get a strategy or policy you have to share with it with the higher authority now nfpa national fire protection association has prepared fire diamond for four classes for so that you can easily identify what type of hazard is this is it fire hazard is it health hazard or is it 
any kind of specific hazard so fire hazard is red color diamond health hazard is blue color diamond and yellow hazard uh, yellow color indicates the instability that it might self-reactive, detonates anytime, or it may be violent chemical changes. And white, white one is specifically given information. For example, don't put it under water. Don't let it touch under water. So if in water, if it get touch of water, then it might explode. So white color is specific kind of information of hazard. Here is the detail of health hazard, fire hazard, or specific hazard, and here is the classification level according to uh, four, five classes, four, three, two, one, zero. Number four means so extreme health hazard, three is lesser, two is not as much fatal or deadly as number four or three. And number one, materials which on exposure would cause irritation but only my, minor injury. You can just understand if you just read out. Number four cause death fatality and number zero will call very minor in, injury. Flammability hazard or fire hazard also has the leveling of this four number number four means very explosion will occur and number zero is material that will not burn so there is this classification is according to their uh, level of activity and dangerous level reactivity or stability hazard i mean that is instable that is called reactivity hazard actually which are which make reaction within themselves so there is also the four types of five types of classification according to their um, impact of danger so number four material which in themselves are readily capable of detonation or explosion decomposition or reaction at normal temperature or pressures I mean, which is very explosive. You cannot just put it in a normal ambient temperature. There are lots of chemical materials. If you search on Google, you'll just find out there are lots of chemicals which you cannot just put it in the open air, like some fluorine or aluminium products. And in number three, materials which in themselves are capable of detonation but require a strong it initiation source that means it it won't initiate detonation itself it needs a initiation source like water or air and number two materials which readily undergo violent chemical change at elevated temperature that means you need a specific temperature level to detonate it won't detonate in the room temperature or temperature below zero degree it will detonate after temperature 37 number one materials which in themselves are normally stable but which can become unstable at elevated temperature and pressure in number one they they don't usually detonate they don't usually reactive but if the temperature rises they can be very reactive and zero materials which in themselves are normally stable even under free exposure condition and which are not reactive in water i mean that's kind of safe so this is the sign of reactive material according to global harmonized system that is another system of leveling or pictograms of hazardous material you don't need to learn about the detail in this class so specific hazard that can be infectious disease that can be the a radio signal that can be that will call thunderstorm magnetic hazard that is radioactive hazard poisonous that is called environmental impact, corrosives, explosions. All these are categories under this white color of specific hazard.
the letter OX indicate an oxidizer oxidizer that causes oxidization so any kind of specific hazard you will use this white color sign let's move up to safety data sheet I already discussed about safety data sheet and OSHA occupational safety hazard association has made this safety data sheet so that it can be available all the employees and workers they can just find out what kind of danger will the chemical they are using will pause actually this is uh, the safety data sheet is a written document or written book if you search on safety data sheet online you'll find it I'm not just showing it due to the time constraint so safety data sheet is kind of book that will give the detailed information I have already discussed this type of information and this kind of uh, look it will make for example ammonia or diesel in the safety data sheet the detail will be written so if you work with the diesel or ammonia then you have to first read down the safety data sheets and which kind of accidents may it cause then you will, will just take the precaution then you start working on for example if in the safety data sheet if any material says that it might cause irritation to your skin so you you have to use the gloves if it says that it might cause damage to your eyes so you have to use the goggles so it depends not every chemical needs to be used the PPE goggles or gloves or mask if it indicates the exact hazard then you have to use this kind of protective measures and the isolation of hazards <coughs> in order to work with hazardous material in your company in your factory in your industry you have to put it isolated so that it doesn't come up with the general working environment the normal furniture normal working environment so that you have to put it under a very protective storage and if it cause the fire hazard you have to use the fire loading standard that is identified the amount of combustible or flammable materials within an area which is important to determine the fire resistance needed for walls or other structures so you have to calculate the amount of materials combustible material in your factory if you don't know if you don't calculate then it might cause danger so in your case it must be put on the fire loading amount which is low fire loading that is not exceed, exceeding one lakh British thermal unit one hour fire resistance I mean, if you have low fire loading, low amount of combustible materials in your company, if any kind of fire hazard occurs, then it, it can be resistant for one hour. You can resist the fire, resist the fire for one hour. But if it's high fire loading, if it's exceeds two lakh British thermal units per feet square, then you need to have the design for three hour fire resistance i mean you have a fire plan or fire design to hold the fire for at least three hour you, ha you have to put a strong fire door a strong kind of resistive materials uh, measures that i have discussed in the previous lectures and you have to be keep out all the all type of ignition sources from the hazardous material what are the ignition sources for example open flame or cigarette smoking if any kind of combustible material is stored in a storage then there should smoking should be strongly prohibited there no one no one should smoke inside that room or storage so again no kind of welding or cutting should be there no hot surface should be there and no there should not be any kind of electrical leakage that might cause a huge explosion if any kind of short circuit happens on the storage and there is a 
slides on flashpoint and ignition point that I already discussed in the previous lectures and you have to know for the fire plan or the or the safety what are the flash point of the liquid what is the vapor density what is the solution is it soluble in the water and the what are the specific gravity of the flammable liquids this kind of information you should have kept in mind and also in the written information otherwise it won't be possible for you to take the precaution and make fire fight. For example, in Bangladesh, in any kind of fire hazard occurs in the warehouses or factories or chemical go-downs, no one can say that what exact kind of loss has occurred, what are the loss amount, they cannot say because they don't maintain these kind of protocols, they don't make May, uh, uh, maintain safety data sheets they don't have any kind of idea of their chemical loadings unloadings and the, about the hazard so in in a well structured organization or factory you must have this kind of information in your mind <clears throat> and why it is important the determination of hazard you have, have to the extensive knowledge the nature and raw material and how these materials are combined. So if you just work on this with any kind of chemical products or hazardous material, you have to have the extensive knowledge on the nature of this material. And physical operation include filtration, distillation and so forth. I mean, what kind of physical operation you need to keep it safe? Do you need the filtration? do you need distillation so you have to be very careful and obviously all of these should be handled with the expert personnel for example now COVID-19 the virus testing not general people you and I cannot just work on the lab by lab so there should be the expert person who knows about the danger and who can take the precaution who actually knows about the things so that you can avoid the hazard here is a table of potential hazard and emergency action that you have to you should take if any kind of hazard occurs i won't go through the detail of this you will just read down and find out if the, what are the potential of explosives what is the potential hazard of non flammable gases no oxidizers, flammable gas, flammable solids, or combustible dusts. For example, for flammable solid, the potential hazard might be fire may be ignited by heat, sparks, flames, burn rapidly with flare burning effect. I mean, the flammable solid might cause the rapid burning. And how would you take the action or emergency action for the prevention of this fire? you have to use dry chemicals or car carbon dioxide and for large fire you have to use foam or water i have already showed what type of extinguisher should be used and what type of flames so if you just go through these tables you will find out easily that for which kind of hazard you should take which kind of emergency action so I am just ending my lecture here. The lecture is very short and brief because of the time constraints and it will take more data to load. And if you have any kind of further query, and this is from the uh, reading material, you already given principles of fire hazard. So I have just taken the materials from there, chapter 4. So if you have any kind of query, any kind of confusion, you are always welcome to contact with me or comment uh, below my video. So please comment below my video. Take care. All the best. Hopefully we can meet very soon. Thank you.